गुड आफ्टरनून वेलकमिंग वन एंड ऑल फॉर दिस सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑन इम्पैक्ट लेक्चर सीरीज सो वेर वी हैड इन द मॉर्निंग द फर्स्ट सेक्शन बाई डॉक्टर निशा देश पांडे on role of ipr in idea generation execution so now we have the second plenary lecture under this impact lecture series which is organized by institutions innovation council of vidya pratishthan's art science commerce college so i take this opportunity to welcome today's guest speaker dr pavan kumar who is senior scientist at csir institute of minerals and material technology bhuneshwar Uh, Dr. Pawan Kumar, sir, we welcome you on behalf of Vidya Pratishtha, which is celebrating its golden jubilee this year. So we are so happy, sir, to be introduced to you on behalf of this Impact Lecture Series, and we would definitely be looking forward to in future for much uh, such endeavors. So thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation and for being present today for this lecture. I also welcome uh, Dr. Bharat Shinde, sir, principal. of vidya pratishtha arts science commerce college dr lala saheb kashit vice principal of science faculty mrs neelima pandarkar coordinator iqac president iic dr tushar gorse convener iic and all the other coordinators of iic of vidya pratishtha arts science commerce college for today's lecture now i call upon dr tushar gorse the convener for iic to kindly introduce the context of today's lecture by dr pavan kumar good afternoon to one and all today's uh, second speaker dr pavan kumar principal dr bharat singh sir vidya pratishtha art science commerce college dr kashit sir vice i think your voice is maybe you are mute uh borse ji like you are mute i think you are borse sir yeah borse sir on mute uh -huh. yeah yeah okay go ahead i was not audible mm -hmm. now you are on your audio is okay yeah good afternoon one and all uh, i welcome today's speaker dr pavan kumar respected principal dr bharat chinde sir vidya pratishthan art science commerce college dr kashit sir vice principal vpsc mrs nilima pendarkar madam iqc in charge and president uh, iic and the coordinator of this impact lecture series mrs nilima devi uh, vpsc Uh, uh, my dear uh, faculty members and the different activity coordinators of iic and the dear students so we are in the second phase of this impact lecture series uh, in the second lecture by dr pavan kumar so as we all know that this uh, institutional innovation Co council is formulated under the uh, aegis of ministry of education and under this uh, iic the college uh, is required to create an environment so that there is an interest which is generated among the students as well as the faculty towards uh, some good ideas some innovative ideas then how to generate these ideas how to execute these ideas how to convert your idea into a, a product or and technology which could be helpful to the society and there there is a need of an interdisciplinary approach so maybe a, a, a science student can Uh, interact with an commerce people or with the arts people so that with this all coordinations 
a good technology could be developed and it could be useful for the society so uh, that's that's the motto of uh, iic and that is what we have initiated and started at uh, vidya pratishthan arts and commerce college so just to introduce about vpsc to dr pawan kumar because uh, first time we are interacting first of all i'll i'll thank I'd like to thank you uh, thank him that he has accepted our invitation with one phone call or one message only so for your information sir vidya pratishthan arts science commerce college it's uh, and uh, college affiliated to savitri bai phule pune university it's uh, re accredited uh, by nac with a b plus plus grade we are among the uh, performer bank a of aria that is atal innovation center uh, in 2021 also we have also been awarded second rank for swachhata among the higher education institutes by mhrd new delhi the college uh or the departments around five to six departments of the college are uh, granted as the star college by the department of biotechnology new delhi the college has uh, developed uh, so that the students can enjoy the uh, sophisticated instruments for their practicals and the research work recently uh, the college has been recognized by dsir uh, the zero recognition has been obtained we are also having the national skill development center under which uh, we do provide some uh, specific uh, or skill based programs so that the student they can uh, upskill themselves along with their regular education then we also have a concept called as career katta under which uh, many uh, guidance regarding the civil services career counseling is being given to the students the college has also been recognized as a best college by savitri bai phule pune university and uh, we are the recognized research center for biotechnology physics chemistry and microbiology departments so uh, and uh, the facility as far as it is concerned we uh, we have highly equipped uh, laboratories and sophisticated instrumentation are there so that the students in their uh, undergraduate level only they are exposed to the high end instrumentation at least they uh, get to see those instruments or uh, get to see the demos with those particular instruments so that's the uh, college where we are uh, working upon uh, so with this short introduction i uh, once again welcome you for this uh, impact lecture series thank you thank you thank you very much sir yes uh, we welcome you pawan kumar sir and it's a great honor for us to be associated with you uh, and we were definitely looking forward to as professor has rightly said so we are an upcoming educational organization but still running towards the golden jubilee as an organization but uh, vidya pratishthan art science commerce college uh, the glimpse is what sir has put forth to you sir yes uh, through this innovation council we would definitely be looking forward to grooming our students towards patents towards innovating their ideas and incubating their ideas and coming out with startups in future so we would be uh, looking forward to collaborating with many such great scientists like you sir in future who would be of great help for our students to take up their ideas and to incubate them and to come up with very bright startups which would be a pride to india so thank you very much sir uh, for accepting our invitation for being present so to the student fraternity and to our other faculty members and the iic members and even the administration i would like to introduce to you all uh, today's guest speaker dr t pavan kumar who is the senior scientist at csir institute of minerals and material technology bhuneshwar and who has completed his education from usmania university hyderabad and who has completed his phd uh from csir iict uh, synthetic organic chemistry with his specialization and uh, who had also courses uh, in patents law and in wipo course uh, on patent drafting and uh, sir has huge experience as ip scientist at dolsera uh, he is the inspire faculty at iict hyderabad and he as postdoc from usa 
and uh, sir has also been associated with nrdc new delhi as manager of ip and uh, was also assistant professor at puducherry and a senior scientist at bhuvaneshwar at present and he is also the visiting faculty at ict ioc odisha and faculty at iser bahrampur so a huge uh, experience of both teaching as well as research and sir on his credit has several awards as the member global intellectual property convention uh, 2018 and wipo scholarship 2016 sir young scientist 2015 telangana young scientist 2015 dst inspire faculty 2012 university first and almost four gold medals through his msc in 2004 and at present to his credit he has 34 patents with 19 granted patents and 12 published patents and three in pipeline filed recently and out of these patents a few have been licensed with two us patents being licensed and one indian and one great britain and 22 publications in total of international repute and sir has given such trainings on ipr and even basically his area being chemistry so 20 near about training sessions in chemistry and 30 on ipr and almost 200 guest lectures which have been delivered under the auspices of ugc hrdcs of punjab university pondicherry university usmania university on several topics like innovation intellectual property rights and chemistry and he has also introduced around 100 first time investors to the ip ecosystem and he has sensitized around 10000 enthusiasts on various aspects of ipr it's an immense record at such a young age and giving so many students towards innovation and towards ipr is a great big deal in its own and he also have several recognitions and memberships as associate fellow of andhra pradesh academy of sciences life member chemical research society of india inspire faculty of dst fast track scientist of serb life member of material research society of india life member of indian society of chemists and biologists life member of indian science congress and a member of global intellectual property convention so all these achieved in quite a short span of 4 years which itself speaks for the credit that she that he has in these so you can just have a very brief glimpse of his entire academic record where we have so many publications and research patents projects awards so i think it's a big boost for our students to look at you sir and get self motivated not just listening to your lecture but looking at your bio data itself is more than sufficient for them to be inspired to take up a career like yours thank you so much sir for being part of our vidya pratishthan community for the first time so we are happy to welcome you where we are heading towards the golden jubilee celebration so this year would be special where we are having an interaction with such a great scientist like you so i think uh, it itself speaks a lot about your huge voluminous uh, academic record and your cv thank you so much sir for associating with us so now i request you sir to kindly take it ahead thank you sir thank you thank you uh, nilima ji for your detailed uh, introduction i think I, i spelled your name correct right uh, you are nilima yes sir right so thank you uh, thank you very much and also i thank uh, dr borse for taking all the efforts in inviting me to this program and first of all i should congratulate you uh, for uh, your golden jubilee celebrations and i think you have mentioned your your college is like an upcoming college i don't think that you are an upcoming college you are al already a very well established and very huge college very big college i can say mm -hmm. because the kind of performance and the progress that could that i could notice from dr borse's presentation it speaks about i think you have almost all brought each and every aspect which is required for nurturing a student if yes. i recall my college days 
hardly we used to go to the college because <laughs> only duty was to attend the classes and in those days no online these things were not there i think the major purpose of going to the college was attendance and if i remember correctly in my first uh, first year bsc my attendance percentage was, was only 9% <laughs> second year around 13 14% but what happened is in second year i got 100 out of 100 in chemistry <laughs> therefore our principal was a chemistry professor she used to come to our class every day and she used to ask whether pawn is there or not <laughs> so just for sake of her i used to put lot of attendance and in third year i i put around 89% of attendance so this is how uh, the culture used to be there in those days but of course the fault is not with the college or not with the faculty but majorly with the students yes, yeah. so to 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 be realistic because faculty and college were always committed but as a student maybe many of many of us like or many of we could not realize the importance but now the kind of facilities and the kind of infrastructure and the kind of programs that you have, uh, that your college is practicing are really really appreciable once again i appreciate the entire team of vidya pratisthans college and uh, your college is affiliated to savitri bai phule university one of the uh, well known university in the country i have been to that university because there is center nccs national center for cell sciences we have collaboration with them we have a joint patent with them also so the campus is very beautiful and so i think uh, with an integrated manner your college can achieve even more laurels in coming years so with this uh, once again i thank you all and also congratulate on your golden jubilee year of celebrations and in today's presentation what i do is i will be talking to you on the idea to enterprise to be in short of course you gave the title how to incubate and execute ideas but that in short i i call it as idea to enterprise and here we will be discussing on what is called an idea how do we generate ideas what do we mean by creativity and innovation and then we connect it to entrepreneurial activities so this would be today's presentation and i think my my good friend dr nishad might have talked to you on the various aspects of intellectual property rights okay of course yeah. even in my discussion maybe there could be few slides which may interfere with his uh, his uh, lecture also and whenever or uh, whenever you get any query please feel to stop me at that stage so that we can clarify on those queries or otherwise we can also take the queries at the end of the session and as we go into the session uh, i'll just switch off my video to avoid any kind of technical uh, interference and then i'll just share my screen yes yes hope my screen is visible yes 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 okay so here is the title how to incubate and execute an idea as i told i call it as idea to enterprise and of course uh, this is my brief biodata anyway uh, nilima ji has explained it very well and these are the places from where i got my education training and also working experience both in chemistry research as well as intellectual property and this outcome i could show only uh, because of uh, integrating intellectual property practices or patent practices with our research activities otherwise uh, i would have got only the left hand side part right hand side part is mainly because of integrating patent activities with regular academic and research activities and here is the layout of today's presentation we start with what are called ideas and then creativity inventiveness then entrepreneurship and we'll i'll also show you uh, some decent number of examples covering some indian and local examples and we end up our session with some takeaway messages so when we talk about ideas is it that ideas are confined to only a limited kind of societies or communities or countries the answer is no each one of us is a born inventor on and average 
a, a human mind can generate about 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts per day. You, me, he, she, everyone, each and everyone is capable of generating about 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts per day. So that means we have the capability of generating huge number of ideas. Thoughts are nothing, nothing but ideas, right? But if this is the volume, then how come we are still struggling to come up with some potential ideas or potential contributions? The reason is more than 95% of these ideas that are generated every day are repetitive in nature. And many of them are useless ideas or they don't have any purpose, they don't have any connection, they don't have any uh, solution. So therefore, only there will be about 1-2% to 2 of ideas which might have some potential. It all depends on us to recognize them, to tap them, work on them and convert them into some practical outcomes. This is possible provided if you can develop some creativity levels and you add these creative concepts in converting those ideas into workable ideas. So therefore, creativity is nothing but the ability to think in newer ways, solving problems in new, in a new manner, right? Producing new works of art. Always we need to think away from the box. If you are a person who does the activities or the works like any other, then I think there is no creativity at all. To be creative, we should be different. And once you, st once you try to be different, certainly your thought process will be different. Your work approach and your attitude and your commitment will also be different. And this different, 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 whatever we call, will certainly make you or bring some difference in you with respect to others. And this difference will certainly help you in converting your idea into a profitable outcome. Not just outcome, it's a profitable outcome. So therefore, try to generate ideas, own them in the form of IP, and then exploit them for making some profits. And nowadays, uh, we generally come across the concepts like entrepreneurship, startup, innovation, and all these things. Is it that only this generation has to work on these aspects? Then what about our earlier generations? Believe me, from the time of the existence of human life, generation of generating ideas, creativity, innovation, incubation, entrepreneurship, all these were there. Just look into this picture. This is how the early human being, beings used to survive, lead their life. Slowly what happened? Some improvement has taken place. Even as on today, in some parts of the globe, there are people who are like this only. Still, they are not so civilized. They are almost all at least some thousands of years back to the regular civilization or regular development that is happening. And then over a period of time, what happened? From the beginning, nature was very, very good in providing all the necessities, needs, and also the other aspects which are required for the survival of a human being and also other animals or other creatures, maybe living or maybe non-living. But from this modern generation onwards, the natural things which are available in nature were imitated with human contributions. See, banana versus burger, air, uh, air versus AC, right? So these are available in nature, but these things we have created. Then how did we create them? 
again someone has got an idea then they worked on that idea converted them into product or practice then slowly they started incubating that practice and as a small business and slowly they they geared up i now they are a big businesses and if you look into this picture can someone answer me what this picture talks about anyone present in the meeting what is this picture all about huh someone any idea it's so it is all about eureka eureka archimedes the theory of buoyancy discovery it's a discovery why it happened only to the archimedes what about if someone else is there whether it is archimedes or someone else the same thing would have happened before archimedes many people have experienced this during the time of archimedes also many people were experiencing that but they unfortunately apart from except for archimedes all others were not really connecting their scientific spirit with the surroundings it is the archimedes who could able to connect his scientific spirit with the surroundings and the happenings around him so that he could come up with the theory of buoyancy so therefore having ideas itself is not sufficient you might be very great in generating ideas unless you convert those ideas into practice ideas are of no use at all so therefore we need such ideas which have which have some potential to reach to the market to reach to the profit to reach to the public if you can come up with these ideas yes certainly they are called as potential ideas and you can work on them and after that you can just look into incubation or entrepreneur entrepreneurship kind of activities just look into these examples these are the primitive wheels which were invented by early human beings but now if you go into the market powered wheels are there geared wheels are there alloy wheels so several kinds of wheels have come but believe me if the idea generated by early human beings on wheels was not taken place at all i think today the kind of advancement that we are seeing might or might not be possible this early so therefore the purpose of showing all these kind of examples here is generating ideas and developing creativeness incubation innovation and entrepreneurship maybe the terminologies might be very modern and very new that we are seeing today but the practices are not new they are the age old practices if these practices were not there means this kind of civilization we could we would not have really seen so therefore from the existence of human life all these aspects were already inbuilt some people practiced them some people neglected them some people may not be having deep understanding only these are the differences that is how today some some societies or some communities or some nations are called as advanced nations or advanced societies some others are not so look at this in early early days no houses it started with the huts some huts for for safety and survival then fine tuned structures have come but now we are into a completely modern modern era so therefore when this era comes i think for all of us we should look into the various aspects in a systematic manner so look into what is called entrepreneurial idea an entrepreneurial idea is a feasible financially sound technically possible and socially acceptable acceptable idea of a product or a project that may have utility 
to the perspective customers so, sorry it is l1 not l1 that is two to perspective customers no one can come up with an idea and in the very first instance convert it into a business opportunity and start a small business on that basis that is not possible no one can immediately convert their idea into a business but continuous contributions continuous commitment may certainly lead to a success then an entrepreneurial idea comes from an established mechanism to generate many ideas so that at least one idea has the potential for a business opportunity it requires a series of steps to finalize it into a profitable business i i just brought some list outs of the sources of new ideas for the entrepreneurs generally if you sit alone i am start generating ideas maybe your ideas are of not that potential because you don't know something will keep on coming into mind you may feel that this is possible that is possible all this comes into the mind but however there is a systematic approach to generate ideas how yes entrepreneurs throughout the world use the following sources to tap to identify good ideas they look into the customers they look into existing organizations this uh, distribution channels government financial institutions r and d trade shows focus groups and they also brainstorm with the people with the stakeholders and so there are several ways that means one need to involve in networking aspects one need to read the surroundings by doing so you can fine tune your thought process by fine tuning the thought process you can also fine tune your ideas which may have some potential so therefore look at an example of an idea which led to the invention of mobile phone maybe about 40 years back i think mobile phone was not into use but now people are there without houses without clothes also without proper clothes but i think hardly we find people with a mobile phone yes or no because it is really really essential for each and every community and each and every individual the person like you or me or someone else on one fine day he or she got an idea that how come if we can develop a a phone which can always be with the individual that was an idea as such idea will not bring you anything then they thought yes why can't we really work on this they started working on that idea it took lot of time they have put lot of energy money resources slowly they could able to develop a proof of concept then they could come up with a prototype and then they scaled it up they have networked with the nearby people nearby communities they tested it it started working well then they went on for commercial production and then the product has come into the market now there are so many companies which are manufacturing mobile phones but the inventor of mobile phone is maybe a single person or a, a team of few people it is because of their idea because of their contributions now we all could use mobile phone and we all know the mobile phone industry is a very big market in this generation so therefore as i mentioned an idea to reach to the market will be requiring time people and money apart from many others but in india especially in academic and research sectors most of the ideas will go to the level of proof of concept and then they stop there people are not really interested in pursuing them further so that is how 
we may come up with good number of publications good number of projects good number of fellowships and all these things will happen but unfortunately many of our contributions are only going to the level of proof of concept but unless your idea qualifies all these stages and reaches to the final stage it is generally not called as a potential idea so therefore we need such kind of ideas which can be generated and taken further until the final stage is reached only those ideas are acceptable profitable and also they gain lot of they gain immense attraction from the global communities i now here i brought another comparative chart we all know that nature has the highest levels of creativity but at the same time human beings are also not less than the nature of course they are not equal to nature but yes we are we are almost all giving a decent level of competition to the nature's creativity just come try to uh, understand this comparative chart nature gives the leaves leaves are present in nature right we have come up with solar panel brain computer or electronic circuitry dna computer program eardrum microphone i i and camera the heart and the pump spinal cord or the nervous system communication or telephone cables birds are there we have come up with music systems right so this is how we all have the potential to generate great ideas and then we also have the potential to convert them into profitable outcomes so therefore humans can think and create and what is the impact of a smart idea if you can come up with a smart idea or potential idea this would be the impact why there are only few countries which are called as superpowers or developed countries in the on the on this globe there are more than 200 countries hardly 5 to 6 countries are called as developed countries more than 190 countries are or more than 180 or 175 countries are called as either developing or under developed countries why it is because of this the ideas generated by the people working in the countries like us japan korea are very smart very impactful so therefore they are they are almost all capturing the whole global market and that is how they could evolve and emerge as the leaders whereas all others are the followers and whenever you come up with an idea it may lead into a discovery or invention i think in the first lecture you might have you might have uh, you might have come across the differences between the discovery and invention discovery is something which is already there in the nature but the person who observes it may may find it out and then tells to the the whole world for the first time that is how they will get the credit newton's theory of gravitation einstein's theory of relativity all these are discoveries if not newton someone else would have definitely found it out or it was happening anyway but invention is not like that invention is a solution to the problem existing in the field of science and technology in general so therefore invention requires 100% human intervention and whenever 100% human human intervention comes then ip plays a major role because ip refers to creations of the mind if you create everything on your own then it is a invention if you observe something in the nature then it is a discovery so therefore these are the different types of intellectual property rights which are an outcome of human creativity i think you might have seen or you might have discussed about all those things i don't go into the details but please look into this slide
starting with an idea the depending on the kind of output you make you may get different kinds of ip sir so idea leading to expression you may get a copyright idea leading to invention or innovation you may get a patent idea if it results into quality and identity you may get a trademark and idea leading to appearance you may get a industrial design and if you can keep your idea as a secret then it would be a trade secret so likewise an idea can be converted into any of these outcomes and then those outcomes can be protected by way of intellectual property rights why an idea has to be protected with ip because to reach to the market again there is a huge amount of competition so therefore to gain your to gain your impact to gain your edge one need to protect your idea by way of ip and if your idea reaches to market and bring some profit then such kind of contribution is called as innovation invention may or may not reach to the market but innovation definitely will reach to the market and here is a kind of equation i brought to you creativity is nothing but the ability to work in different manner that we have already discussed then what do we mean by innovation innovation is creativity plus productivity and if you systematically wish to explain the the terminologies of creativity and innovation it goes like this creativity is idea plus action just having idea is not called as creativity you need to have an idea you need to work on that idea that is called as creativity innovation is creativity plus productivity that means an idea then you have to convert it as a workable idea by working on it then it should bring some profit it should lead should lead to some productivity so idea action and productivity are related to the innovation see an idea may bring you a product idea to product this would be the strategy of course i may not be going into the uh, i may i may not be going into the details of all these subheadings that you see on this slide but yes idea can lead to a profitable product idea if it has got potential to reach to the market yes it may reach to the market but however there are again so many factors involved it in it like expression uh, distribution product management and marketing and once you come up with the first two concepts then the third one would be idea to profit again here intellectual property and business models will play an important role in bringing the profits so idea to product is very easy you may work in the laboratory develop a product develop a very fruitful product develop a first time product useful product yes very good and then comes idea to market yes your idea after after re, after make uh, after uh, after forming or framing a product you may take the product to the market right that is also possible you may you may tap with some agencies you can bring your product to the market so when once you once your product comes to the market means it is idea to market is that sufficient for you the answer is no it should also be a profitable idea otherwise there is no use because you have invested so much of your money time energy and resources and unless you get profit your idea has no much significance so therefore if your idea brings you profit yes you are really on the path of success but believe me out of 100 efforts hardly one effort will really see the profit so therefore converting an idea or taking an idea to profit is not an easy job a risky job but yes a possible job also so therefore 
we all should aim to have these kind of ideas the ideas which will definitely lead to the profit and here ip also plays a important role and now let us look into some concepts like entrepreneur entrepreneurship and the differences between them entrepreneur is nothing but an individual who is capable of taking risk and doing some innovative aspects entrepreneurship is it is an activity right it is an activity and one need to be creative one need to be confident and also goal oriented motivated and hard working always one should be capable of facing the risks then only you can think on incubating innovating and entrepreneurial activities otherwise it's very difficult so therefore if i ask you this query why are you interested in entrepreneurship there could be several answers from you someone may say i have a technological breakthrough sir my idea is very great i can come up with a great or in different in different product which no one has seen in the market very good in that case yes you pursue your idea make that product and test your luck or someone may say sir i have just an idea i don't want to i don't want to work but i have a great idea i am sure that this idea is very great if someone is ready to work on this idea they can make profits in that sense also you may try to become an entrepreneur or if you have a passion sir i have passion for entrepreneurship i am passionate about that yes certainly if you belong to any of these categories these three categories definitely you can think of taking the entrepreneurial journey so therefore in any of these cases you may want simply to uncover the world of startups and entrepreneurship if so let us get started of course that's it's a, it's a kind of statement that i brought from here and there and please look into these aspects as i mentioned taking up the entrepreneurial activity is a challenging task because the grim reality is that most of the startups they generally fail incubation is an early stage of startup activity right why because of so many factors but there are five essential elements which lead to the success idea you need to have a smart and potential idea you need to have a very decent team a proper execution of the work and you need to come up with a business model a very well planned business model it has to be executed properly also then you should have a, a sufficient funding mechanism or sufficient funding might be must be there for you otherwise what happens your idea may be valuable but you don't have enough money to push it further if that is the case then certainly you will face a big difficulty and the timing timing is the most essential thing out of all these five factors if your idea work working model or business model and execution or team work whatever you call if they are not timely then you are gone case you will also go into the failure category so therefore if you wish to become an entrepreneur or if you if you wish to incubate your idea and then execute it towards entrepreneurship activities you must inculcate this five practices in a very very systematic manner if you do so yes there is a huge scope of seeing the success here are few startups which could succeed starting from their incubation to entrepreneurship now of course they are the big entrepreneurs now look at this uber instagram likewise many others and someone has made a survey how much 
Instagram has got on these five factors: idea, team management, business model, funding, and timing. Look into this. Eight nine five four nine. That funding is funding was very less for Instagram. It also depends upon the kind of idea or kind of work you are involved in. Look into Uber. Eight ten seven seven ten. Right. And look into this. Airbnb. Idea team, BM funding, business model funding, timing. Right. So therefore, one need to be very very. cautious while taking up the entrepreneurial journey or entrepreneurial activities here are few examples of the failed models or failed startups look at this timing was very poor when timing is poor forget about other things if your timing is not good then gone case whatever great you may be whatever great your idea might be whatever great team you might be having they are of no use at all so therefore whenever you take up the entrepreneurial activity you should have the sense of working in a time in timely manner so here are the factors as i mentioned the first and foremost factor is the time factors of success is across more than 200 companies were like this the companies which have come up with their efforts in a timely manner they could see success with highest percentage then team execution team and work execution idea business model and funding so therefore entrepreneurship is the identification evaluation and exploitation of opportunities it not it is not about just ideas it is about the opportunities as we all know that everyone is capable of generating ideas there could be huge amounts of funding that might be possible from several sources in spite of having all these things if you don't find an opportunity a proper opportunity or if you don't tap the opportunity then you will not see a success so therefore it is all about identification evaluation and exploitation of the opportunities the process of designing launching and running a new business is called as entrepreneurship and then what do you mean by incubation incubation is an early stage of entrepreneurship even for incubation you need to have a designing process you need to have a launching process you need to have a running process but incubation is a kind of time period where the risk factors might be very less because immediately you are not really aiming to go into the market incubation period is a kind of period where you are working to develop, to come up with a model which might have potential to reach to the market okay so here i will show you one picture here marco polo we have we all heard about marco polo right some thousands of years back these were the trade routes of marco polo just imagine marco polo in those days itself used to do trading through these routes that means through these many countries so he is this is a kind of inspiration for this generation to be taken up if you are really interested in the entrepreneurial activities there are few characteristics of successful entrepreneur they must be ambitious self confident adaptable humble hard working persuasive they also should be comfortable in taking risks there should be dare enough to take the risk and there's another meaning because everyone defines entrepreneurship in their own lines i have taken the definitions from great people an entrepreneur is someone who envisions creates and evangelizes an idea that they are absolutely crazy about 
someone who looks at life differently an entrepreneurship does not an entrepreneur does not see the normal obstacles that life puts in our way i in shy away like most of us do generally what what do we do no 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 ye to bahut risky hai ye hamare se nahi hoga itna nahi kar sakte hai hamare paas resources nahi hai we cannot do these things infrastructure nahi hai ambience nahi hai acha ambience nahi hai right generally many of us look into the normal obstacles no 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 may not be possible but entrepreneurship entrepreneurs are not like that for them all these normal obstacles are very silly things they don't even mind them so entrepreneurs think that word no means to find a better way for us for the people like us who are not entrepreneurs no means no but for entrepreneurs no means we have to find a better way so they should be crazy about their ideas all the time here are few examples of the successful startups or successful entrepreneurs who started their journey with the concept of incubation execution then finally led to the successful startups and over a period of time they could emerge as the world's famous entrepreneurs or one of the biggest companies now mncs yes or no but if you look into their history everyone started their journey with a small activity called as incubation innovation then exploitation and while exploiting they could they could see a huge huge scope and this is how they could evolve as one of the biggest companies in the world all these are the examples why entrepreneurship is really encourageable why we should take up entrepreneurship maybe unemployment that is one of the reason or maybe someone wish to make more and more profits yes by taking up entrepreneurship you can do or if you wish to learn about if you wish to, wish to learn more about something in the even in that sense you can take up entrepreneurship and what are the different types of entrepreneurships open entrepreneurship is possible which is by way of doing small businesses small businesses i think now in india some thousands or lakhs of small business have already come they are already running then online businesses yes there are also so many online businesses then home based businesses this is also possible home tuitions online tuitions yes or no and there are so many apps for each and every work just go to go into that app and do your work and everything is ready readily come to your doorstep so all this could be possible because of the kind of improvement in the entrepreneurial activities in our country and there is another concept called as serial entrepreneurship suppose if someone wish to become famous overnight within 2 3 years if you wish to become over uh, famous you may have to go for serial entrepreneurship what these people do does is they will enter into different businesses at the same time they will enter into different businesses some businesses may fail some businesses may succeed but at a given attempt they attempt for more than 5 10 15 20 businesses by that way they wish to create a great visibility and credibility if not credibility at least visibility by that way they make an impact so they are called as serial entrepreneurs i here are some important tips for the entrepreneurs enterprise requires thought and preparation of how to make money how to make an opportunity with little or no potential and how to create and build wealth and also how to succeed 
is on one side on the other on the other side it is an unplanned event yes you may plan very greatly something will happen suddenly so you need to withstand you have to lose money you you may go into loss also you may have to lose money it can be an enormous opportunity also at the same time you must first relinquish wealth then you must experience failure also that means one need to go by balancing all these aspects if you only think on one side then you are not on the right strategy so therefore one need to balance of all these things while taking up the entrepreneurial activity i think this we have discussed it also we, we have discussed right then how do we really convert id our idea into a solution here is the answer idea start with solving problems any problems they are the big opportunities for you as i mentioned if you can tap the opportunity you can exploit the opportunity yes there is a huge scope for you to become a successful entrepreneur so therefore always if you find problems don't be scared up sir isme to bahut problem hai bahut mushkil hai no in those in those problems you have to find the opportunities because if there are no problems no need of any solution and no no need of any forms or no need of any new technologies why why do we need all these things when we don't have any problem and i i don't think that there is not even a single time where we feel that we don't have any problem that means always we 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 feel that we are having some or other problems if some problem is solved some new problems are coming if those new problems are solved some other newer problems are coming so therefore always you should welcome the problems i to be crisp entrepreneurship is nothing but the problem solving humans have problems humans always have problems so therefore we can always find out some solutions by way of products or services new problems then you may come up with new solutions theek hai suppose if you feel that no sir problem to kuch nahi hai if you don't find any new problem any problems then you may find some newer upper newer needs you may come across newer needs even in those situations newer opportunities will open up so therefore new problems new solutions new needs newer opportunities in any of these cases yes there is a huge scope for you i will take one example here levis is a brand name for the jeans you know jeans was not really meant for a fashion there was a problem for the people who were working in mining sector for them their clothes were not lasting for longer times that was a huge problem then how to solve that see if they have to wear every alternate day a new pair of clothes then i think it is very difficult for anyone so therefore that was a serious problem in those times then levis has looked into that problem worked on that problem for finding out some solutions finally after some great efforts they could come up with the very first pair of jeans so initially the jeans whatever we are wearing today was meant for mining workers but now if you are wearing jeans you are modern you are fashionable you will be treated among your colleagues if not oh ye to bahut purana hai very old hai very traditional hai right or not see how how the 
situation has changed. There was a problem. Leave is brought a solution, and that solution is not only satisfying to the to the people who are facing the problem. Now it has become a fashion. So that is how one has to think towards addressing the problems. So therefore, one need to be dare enough to dream about something new. They should be creative, and always they should start working for something new. Don't limit yourself. If you if you if you try to limit yourself, then nothing is possible. So therefore, your efforts should be limitless. Look at these examples. I don't know. Someone might have already taken up these. and this kind of products or businesses businesses might already be there in the market but yes these are some of the examples of creativeness leading to some inventiveness yes rain rainy season will be there someone has come up with this kind of arrangement look at this see look at this when you start taking noodles they will be very hot so someone has put up a fan with the noodle spoon look at this what is this chew umbrella right who knows crazy looks to be very crazy right yes if you have to be if you wish to become an entrepreneur you should go crazy so therefore these are the different kinds of creativity one need to have domain relevant skills one need to develop creative process and one should also have intrinsic task motivation and you should you should have a proper plan or approach towards preparation incubation insight evaluation and elaboration maybe it it appears to be very academic in approach but as yes, practically also this approach is correct look at this idea creativity innovation to enterprise here are some examples here are the examples of the people who conceived the ideas behind these products that you are seeing on this screen they were so creative they worked on their ideas converted them into the products or innovative products and then they brought this product to the market now which are into use all these are the examples so therefore <clears throat> here are few more examples always you need not really look for something which which is very much very very modern in approach or very modern in appearance it can be anything which is different from the existing here is an example of mobile library here is an example of straws made up of wild grass and look at these people how creative they were very crazy so that is how they could build a huge innovation ecosystem and now they are the biggest brands in the world and look into this once upon a time this is how cricket match uh, cricket stumps were used in the cricket field right but now sensor based stumps have come it is all about a person who has generated an idea he is the person who has generated who has uh, who got a thought of developing a sensor based stumping system he developed this then he protected his invention by filing a patent so this is the patent front page and this is the title you can see the diagrams of his his invention now he is considered to be one of the richest person on this globe an idea a simple idea then he converted that into practice made the product then he has incubated then made a prototype then executed his practice his his innovation then now he is into the market not just into the market he is one of the successful innovator look into this fidget spinner 
it is i i think now it is very famous but she is the grand old lady she is the inventor of this fidget spinner the purpose of inventing this was to engage her granddaughter we all know that children are very smart very crazy very active very proactive right so it was her duty to engage her all the day and she was trying to engage her here and there but always she used to she used to expect more and more from her grandmother so her creative skills opened up on finally on one day she has come up with a fidget spinner someone like you and me suggested her to file a patent for that she filed a patent in the european patent office patent has been granted but unfortunately she could not pay the maintenance fee for that patent so therefore patent was not active and when patent got deactivated many mnc's have started working on that patented invention i now this is the worth of spinning toy industry an idea generated by this grandmother to engage her granddaughter resulting into a fidget spinner now is a big industry so this is how one need to tap the potential ideas in all possible means in a very very with a very very systematic approach and look into this example he is a welder by profession welder not like you and me who is bsc msc phd or mphil or this that no just welder but he has come up with a remote control toilet bed system because his wife was not good doctor suggested her bed rest for months or years together he is a very poor man he has to go for work every day to feed his family and for bed with for bedridden person always there is a need of at least one attendant all throughout the time so therefore he is not so rich he cannot stay he is not so rich that he can put some people so there was no other option then inventing something which can solve his problem so this is how he could find a solution for his problem by way of inventing the remote control toilet bed system with this system a bedridden person if he or she is having a minimum consciousness they can operate everything on their own no need of any attendant and he has won the national innovation prize he has got a patent and now he is getting so many orders that he don't have time to see from whom he is getting the orders that much busy he has become he has made huge money also another example chotu cool refrigerator it's a compact refrigerator or mini refri or maybe micro or nano refrigerator maybe maybe na not nano but just nano refrigerator kind of because in india more than 70% population is not in a position to afford for the modern refrigerators unlike the countries like china or us or any other countries so therefore someone has to come up with a solution to address this problem which is faced by the large number of people in our country likewise this product has come and the cost of this product is only 70 dollars 70 in the sense 77s of 49 maybe um, maybe 5000 3 4 5000 5, so various 15000 refrigerator and various 3000 refrigerator so that is how an idea has converted into a practice a profitable practice and look at this simple at its best drinking straw from coconut leaf this is a contribution from a research team of christ university bengaluru they have filed patents not only in india and also in other countries now they they entered into almost all eight or 10 different countries they are into the market they are they are selling their products this is also one of the example from our country which has gone through the stages of idea creativity incubation execution then profit making another example making biochar from human waste so nowadays the whole world is 
revolving around waste to wealth any kind of waste if you can if you can generate some wealth out of that yes you are great so therefore people started looking into the waste materials and converting the converting them into useful products this is one such kind of example making biochar from human waste they started now there is a small company now they have grown up and by doing this they could able to successfully reach to large number of communities in agriculture and horticulture sectors look at this example ramya jos from kerala kerala she has invented a pedal powered washing machine no need of electricity that is one advantage second advantage is physical exercise is taking place like jandu bam ek bam teen kaam one invention two benefits what is what are those two benefits one is physical fitness second one is no need of electricity yes or no these kind of ideas are really required she has filed a patent for this and she also won the national innovation prize from the president of india and now she works for national innovation foundation another example a lot for rural sector bicycle sprayer of course if you go into the market you may find advanced uh, advanced equipment for sp uh, advanced spraying equipments are there japan imported israel imported or american imported those equi equipments are there but they are very costly our people may not be in a position to afford large number of people may not be in a position to afford so therefore he has come up with the invention of this bicycle sprayer very simple invention very easy to handle and see here no need of power push type of sprayer system local manufacturer 1 hectare per day spraying is possible yes we need these kind of contributions but on the other side the similar kind of journey is expanding with another path mcdonalds is an example of innovation look at this marketplace for social good beauty products social supermarkets about 30 40 years back the concept of supermarkets were not there but now everything is available in the supermarket this is also a product of innovative contribution or innovative approach look into this yes i i i i have taken this picture from facebook i think someone has put up the way this fruit vendor is packing the fruits is worth appreciation yes or no plastic is not good cloth may be good cloth bags are good but mobile value for this nothing not that easy uh, to handle sir, look at this uh, everything is biodegradable everything is nature friendly everything is sustainable approach towards sustainable development yes or no everything is green so there is no harm at all yes this also comes under a innovative idea so therefore being an innovate uh, being an entrepreneur you will find so many benefits job satisfaction the success the freedom the happiness and also the money so therefore if you want to establish on your own do something different then certainly you should look for becoming an entrepreneur here are the different functions of an entrepreneurship as i mentioned the very first and foremost thing is idea creativity and innovation then you need to be able to face risk which comes along with the achievements or which goes along with the achievement organization and management should be effective you should always invest in research and development and you should also face the resistance for the change maybe by the societies maybe by the people maybe by the markets and you can also catalyze the economic development if you become an entrepreneur likewise 
these are the characteristics of an entrepreneur the sacrifice hard work smart work professionalism you can build your own empire and you will be the master of your own destiny no one can decide your destiny or no one can decide your path so entrepreneur has all the entrepreneur must develop all these qualities and may have all these kind of characteristics so therefore to do any of these things one need to take up research research which is just not to see or not to do the same thing which everyone is doing but to do something which is different which no one is really looking into so therefore ideas are very common inventions are rare you should really look into those aspects and now in about two slides i will be showing my own contributions you may ask me sir like you have, you have talked about so many aspects like invention innovation creativity idea be different be indifferent and all these things then how did you did you really practice this if so how did you practice them so here are some examples from my own experience see until 2010 or 11 our research was again a traditional research practice we used to take up some topic do some research make some products i make some publications after that start another research work like to start another research work but after 2011 after 2010 i i happened to work in a ip company where i got introduction to ip after few months i realized that ip ip is very very essential for the academic and research communities but however in india somehow the practice or the training on ip to the academic and research communities was not happening maybe our earlier generations might have not might not have realized they, they might not have realized the importance of ip or they might have ignored or they might have neglected i don't know the reason but yes we are not having the systematic ip practices then i thought somehow i could get introduction to ip i should definitely continue that practice by doing so after few years we could able to integrate ip learnings with our research practices then instead of working as individual group we started collaborating with the other groups maybe biology people maybe physics maybe others by working in teams we could really identify some potential problems then we could solve them if not all at least to a at least with good numbers and then we could find some potential results or productive results so here are few of them nimbolide is a natural product which is available in nature generally used for anti cancer treatment what we did is being an organic chemist we could able to design some analogs never analogs or hybrid analogs we could design and develop them we took the help of biology people to evaluate their efficiencies in comparison to the original natural product nimbolite very luckily two of our analogs were found to be much showing much better activities than the natural product then we thought yes definitely we should file some patents we filed patent in india and also in other countries and i think uh, those patents are already granted and there was other work on the process for production of nicotine as on today this our process is the shortest process for making nicotine and we could develop a uh, one pot as well as step wise process where the steps are same you can do this in a step wise manner or also in a one pot method and we filed patents in almost all six countries in all those countries patents were granted and there was another work which is tpp coupled escalatin for anti atherosclerotic effect whether you believe me or not this was the first work for which we thought of filing patents as a chemistry team we could develop this molecule the biology team has conducted extensive biological evaluation they could they could do a very decent work because of which we found a great potential for this molecule then we filed patents 
in India, in US, and in UK. Only in these three countries we filed because that was our very first attempt towards filing patents. With great hesitation, with great resistance from the higher authorities, we could able to file. And when we were doing that, people laughed at us. Hey, what is this? Patent filing? Uh, whatever money you put in, it is of no use at all. It is like putting in dustbin only. Yes, people laughed at us, criticized us like anything. In spite of that, we thought, yes, let us make the, our first attempt. We did it in 2015. We filed the patents. Very fortunately, the same four patents which we filed, one in India, two in US, and one in UK, the same four patents were licensed to Sun Pharma. Look at this. Same four patents. Here are the numbers. Okay. The same four patents were licensed to Sun Pharma. And IACT could receive about 5 crores as first milestone payment. Because there were some other activities going on. If each and every activity is successful, then certainly it will make a very big impact in R&D ecosystem. So the work which we started just for sake of filing patents, that was the only intention. Because whenever I, I, I share my profile with someone, they may see Pawan Kumar having this many pay, this uh, he is MSc year, PhD year, gold medal, all that, 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 publications, projects, and also, oh, he also has got one or two patents. We thought, yes, let us make some attempt because we find some scope with this work. But that has resulted us some great benefit. Now we are very confident that many of our works for which at the stage of designing itself, we are planning or we are deciding whether we should really opt for filing patents or not. That means a practice which was not really a practice was converted into a perfect practice now. And here are the front pages of the patents for the works which I have referred. This is, this is the American patent of the work which was licensed to Sun Pharma. You can find my name here. And this is the patent for process of preparation of nicotine. And myself being uh, a chemist by research and also having IPA patent experience, all these patents, we need not take any help from others. I wrote on myself and it was like a very, very integrated contribution by both chemistry and biology teams. So therefore, the purpose of showing these examples is reflected by this statement. Wisdom lies not in the amount of knowledge acquired, but in the degrees of its application. Yes, we may find the people with great experiences, great knowledge, so many ideas, lots of money. But unfortunately, all these resources were not converted into their proper use. Why? No one is really interested in doing so. Because if I have knowledge, I feel that yes, I am, I am knowledgeful. I need not really work with others. Whoever comes to me, no, you are not knowledgeable, go away. If I have money, I feel that no, 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 I only have money, just I'll keep it with me. And if I have experience, people feel that yes, I am so experienced, people should come to me and take advices. That's all. So that is how our practices have become very, very limited in their approach. But if we can come out of that and try to integrate all these resources, people with knowledge, people with experience, people with money, people with good skills. If we can integrate all these things, certainly we can contribute to some productive outputs or profitable outputs. So therefore, I repeat here again, wisdom lies not in the amount of knowledge acquired, but in the degrees of its application. One example here I, I wish to uh, refer is the welder who has come up with a remote controlled toilet bed system. Because he have whatever minimum knowledge he has got, he could able to apply it to make a product, to make a useful product. So this kind of spirit one has to develop.
So therefore, here are some memorable interactions which uh, I had uh, during my IP and research activities. Because of my IP skills, specialized IP skills, I could able to closely interact with many of the eminent people in science and technology. I think uh, you might be uh, you might be knowing some of them, at least, if not all, at least some of them here present here. Professor C. N. Rao, Dr. A. V. Rama Rao, Professor Gordon Mehta, Dr. Uh, Professor Gautam Desiraju, Dr. Yadav, all these, Professor Periya Swami. So here. IP played an important role for me in reaching out to these many people with such closeness. So with this, I stop here. Thank you. If you have any queries, we can take them up. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Pawan. It was really an uh, interesting topic. And very beautifully, you have presented the slides, starting from the basics, maybe up to the examples what you have quoted. I think the whole presentation might have given an insight to the students about uh, idea, innovation, maybe startup, or basically what you have talked about the entrepreneurship. So thank you for it. Yeah. For any questions? <laughs> students, if you have any questions, please put forward. We have one question in the chat box. If someone who is a beginner and he, he is daring to dream for and to initiate and start up, what should be the modus operandi? Uh, I think uh, the modus operandi in the sense you should be confident enough that the idea that is with you is a potential idea. You should also find out uh, the funding sources which is very very essential unless you have got reasonably good funding you will not you will not be in a position to implement that idea okay and if you are having these two things i think in uh, at present situation there are so many incubation centers across the country you can approach them if you are in pune you can approach venture, venture center I think all, all academic institutions have got incubation centers, all major academic institutions. You can, you can join with them. You can use their resources initially for a period of two to three years where you will get a platform. And by the, by the, by the time, you'll also get to know whether you are on the right track or not. If you feel that you are on the right track, then certainly the entire team will help you to take it further. I think this uh, at this stage there won't be much uh, much procedure for modus of operandi and all these things. It's it's a kind of a trial one need to put in. Okay, thank you. Yes, from the students, any question? Maybe from my side only. I would like to ask: What are the major uh, factors uh, which are the, uh, which may lead to the failure of an entrepreneur? Huh. Major factors are like uh, the time, uh, untimely approach because see even at our institute we have an incubation center. We do get the people with an idea, with some idea stating that sir, we have an idea hai, and uh, we are seeing a very good market. But in practical sense, there are already good number of players in that sector. So therefore finding a scope might be difficult. So therefore, untimely approach, that is one thing. Second thing is too much expectation on their idea. Third thing, idea which they feel as a new idea, in most of the cases that will not be new because they fail in doing proper background work. These these three things I find uh, as the major factors uh, which are contributing to the failure in my uh, in my observation uh, in, in my observation. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir.
sir i would like to pose uh, one question yeah please uh, like even though india is ahead in terms of its ideas and its creativity in the ideas and uh, novelty in the ideas but still when it comes to converting it to a product or a technology or a process we are still lagging behind as compared to china which has too many number of patents on uh, its hand and too many devices coming up into the market so where do you think that there are loopholes still in our indian academic system uh, which need to be bridged up so that we can at least try to fare well enough in this field yes i think it is a very timely question because uh, the major um, the major reason for this is our approach our approach has been a traditional approach both in academics as well as in research if you look into research majorly our focus would be on doing something which is publishable in some impactful journals but after few years if you find some product based on our approach we start saying that no 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 this was my idea mera ek paper tha 10 saal pehle whether you accept it or not whether you believe me or not there is a famous reaction called as sharpless epoxidation in chemistry many of you might be knowing that sharpless epoxidation when i was doing phd in iict one of our uh, senior most scientists in iict he has shown his notebook to me to me in the sense to some of us somewhere uh, at least 8 to 10 years before the sharpless has got the nobel prize for his work he has he ha he wrote that scheme for epoxidation our scientist is so happy that mera jo idea tha wo bahut purana tha and on the same idea sharpless could work and get the nobel prize and this scientist is feeling that as if he himself has got 100 nobel prizes so here the fault is the kind of approach we have we are practicing and when you talk about china they are more realistic chinese file about 15 lakhs patents per year indians are filing only 56000 patents per year and out of this 56000 more than 35000 35 to 40000 patents are filed by foreigners in india that means 130 crore indian population is filing only about 15 to 20000 patents that is one aspect second aspect is out of this 15 to 20000 patents which are filed more than 60 to 70% patents are withdrawn by some or other reason after withdrawing hardly you have got about 5 maybe around 8 to 10000 patents not even 10 5 to 8000 so then just you imagine and you look any great scientist or a professor or a faculty except few majority of them are not realizing the importance of converting the research work into a technological outcome our focus is more on getting impactful publications that's all and countries like us or korea or others korea they do they do basic research but their major focus will be translational research translation yeah that's their focus will be on that but for us we know that translational research is important but it is equally difficult and there somewhere i read indians are poor risk takers indians are poor risk takers but credit seekers and safe keepers poor poor risk taker credit seekers and safe keepers so if you want to be safe it is not possible for us to do a translational research and we want credit but we are gaining that credit just by making some impactful publications and we don't take we, we don't want to take any risk if you don't take risk nothing great is going to happen i think we need to we need to change our practices it is good that now 
in academics the concepts of ipr innovation and entrepreneurship are uh, are put into the curriculum maybe from now in coming another two or three decades we can see much much difference from indian contribution side of course already the difference we are seeing but we need to really compete with the countries like china we may not compete with, i think for us it may, it 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 will not be that easy to compete with countries like us and japan but at least we should compete with china yes yeah. yes for sure and also one thing which i would like to ask is now uh, like how these students in their academic background or with their studies or with their career mm -hmm. so what are the sources where they should look for where they would get the investment for these uh, because okay. even though we say at college level or at few university level where they may not be able to directly approach mm -hmm. so do they have any other sources where they would get finances or maybe investment so that they can incubate or innovate or at least execute their ideas yes of course i think uh, uh, to get a uh, investment directly from some investors uh might be a difficult job uh, at a student level but they can always compete they can always compete in the competitions conducted by several venture centers and other agencies and there are also some special programs conducted by government agencies like national innovation foundation even csr also conducts a program where they invite uh in innovations from the children children in the sense both school and college children they can submit there and by by due selection criteria they'll select some of them and they also support them and if their idea is really potential they can also write to the agencies like uh, national research development corporation and tifac there are some agencies they can also fund them but all these funding sir uh, may not be that easy very competitive in nature and very selective also so these are possibilities okay yeah yeah thank you sir it was really an informative session uh, maybe in future we may expect few more scientific uh, lectures from your side so maybe we'll have a discussion on it or no, probably sir. whenever you are in pune you can surely visit our place Bara oh in your place near to pune i i generally i keep visiting pune now and then yes it's 100 kilometers away from pune oh okay okay so if you happen to come just let us know we'll sure. organize few things so that you can visit and we can have some fruitful discussions where they sure. can be taken out sure i'll let you know if if, if yes. i happen to come to pune i'll let you know yes yes okay uh, heading to the next uh, Uh, yeah, uh, there is a feedback link in the chat box, so I request each and every one to kindly give this feedback, which will be very valuable for us in executing few further programs of similar impact under the lecture series. And I also request each and every one of us uh, to kindly put on your video so that we can take one screenshot of all the participants. and uh, pavan kumar sir i would like to tell you we have dr prasad mahajan uh, from our chemistry department uh, who has also completed his uh, uh, higher studies from abroad and we have dr mahesh vedpatak uh, who also has specialization in nanotechnology and we have dr sangeeta satpute who has a specialization in nanomaterials uh, who completed her phd from cimet and many other chemistry students who have been very interestingly and inquisitively participating in this lecture uh, mahajan sir would you like to introduce yourself please and dr sangeeta satpute madam because you are all from core chemistry background so sir would be interested very happy to see you all happy to see you all here oh hello sir hello. it was a very informative session uh, thank mahajan you for sir, your mahajan sir aawaz thoda sa vadavta hello hi yes. yes i i could i could hear you thank you for your uh, informative session sir
thank you dr prasad mahajan ji like uh, very happy to meet you all here and really i also enjoyed a lot and i hope uh, i have added something new uh, for you all present here and we wish to have our continued association and i really wish your college should definitely come up with some potential ip contributions by way of patents in yes case, yes we are few of few of us are in process of it so okay we are hoping for the things okay, okay. because now now uh, the government has uh, given 80% reduction in all kinds of patent fees associated related to patents yes. for all academic institutions yes. so it is like a great benefit to the academic community yes yes and with the kind of uh, potential you have got definitely you can contribute to a decent yes. extent yes 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 yeah, so we also have dr sangeeta satpute uh, from department of chemistry so i request satpute ma'am Uh, we also have we also have with us dr sangeeta satpute madam from department of chemistry so i request satpute madam to kindly hello sir hello madam hello yeah good evening i am sangeeta satpute actually my special organic chemistry but i have completed my research in uh, conducting organic polymers come right okay so it is a combination of organic chemistry and material science yes yes so very happy to and uh, your topic and your uh, lecture is also very very useful and informative for us will really and as it is a chemistry background na no? we can <laughs> yes yes so, truly i think uh, thank you for your uh, lecture sir. thank you huh? we can definitely look forward uh, working together whenever you have uh, you have some something to be to be worked out in a joint manner or collaborative manner you are always welcome yes because as a csr yes, sure, lab sir, we, sure, sir. as a csr it's a pleasure for us sir ha uh, ha uh, sure sir it's a pleasure for us also sure thank you so as a csr lab we as a csr lab we always uh, open up with uh, any kind of uh, Yeah, uh, collaborations with academic and research institutions. Yes, and we encourage people yes, to file sir. patents. And in in that process, if you need any oh. support from our end, please let us know. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you, sir. Surely. Yeah. I think Rushikesh want to interact. Rushikesh, can you put forward what you want to say? Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Myself, Rushikesh Labde. I am from Chanmul Tara Chanbora College. I am pursuing in PhD now. and i have a idea about uh, you know uh, you manje tumhi je bolle ki ek unique idea asli pahije rushikesh can you be speaking in hindi or english because sir will not be able to understand marathi hindi okay sir mere paas bhi ek idea hai jaise aapne bola ki ek unique idea hona chahiye aapke paas तो ऐसा आइडिया है मेरे पास कि मैंने भी अभी एक ऑर्गेनिक शू कॉलेज बनाया है जैसे कि एक बनाने बनाना के जो स्किन होता है हाँ। उससे ऑर्गेनिक शू कॉलेज बनाया है वो आइडिया अभी हम इनक्यूबेट है सावित्री बाई फुले यूनिवर्सिटी में तो आपका जो ये सीरीज चल रहा है कॉलेज का वो एकदम बढ़िया सा सीरीज है तो इसमें आपने जो बताया कि आपने खुद पेटेंट राइट किया है आपके पेटेंट जो है खुद आपने राइट किए है तो वही सब इस बारे में कोई अगर एक लेक्चर हो आपका कि पेटेंट कैसे राइट करते हैं तो एक बहुत अच्छा सपोर्ट मिल जाएगा कि हमें भी अभी पेटेंट राइट करना है हमारा राइट राइट आई रियली अप्रिशिएट योर कंसर्न एक्चुअली लाइक आई स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम लास्ट टू इयर्स ऑनवर्ड्स वी स्टार्टेड कंडक्टिंग सेवरल प्रोग्राम्स ऑन आईपीआर एंड इनोवेशन लाइक वाइज यू वाइल यू आर रीडिंग माय सीवी यू रोड सेंसिटाइज अबाउट टेन थाउजेंड पीपल से वी हैव पुट ए टारगेट ऑफ एटलीस्ट रीचिंग टू टेन टू फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड enthusiast every year that was the number of la last year program we have conducted about 10 different programs on ipr and innovation last year and this year uh, last month we have conducted a program every year we conduct on the title new ipr national e workshop on Inno intellectual property rights and innovation this time we have invited uh, controller general of patents and trademarks professor unnat pandit as the chief guest okay yeah this this program is our our exclusive program by immt apart from that we also have another program called as neat ipr national e awareness come training program on ipr 
this program is a joint program if any interested organization may be a university college or r and d organization if they are interested they can always write to us in a joint collaborative manner we conduct these programs under this banner of okay. neat ipr so every year we aim to conduct this apart from this we also conduct several other programs on patent writing patent search patent drafting patent filing and weekly i think uh, at least six or seven different lectures on ipr uh, will uh, i will be generally giving on these topics at various uh, places so whenever it is possible please do let me know so that we can also have a session on um, ipr or patent filing patent writing aspects definitely that that will be a great advantage also okay maybe from your side sir if you have uh, any online sessions please do let us know so fine fine so yeah. whenever uh, whenever we conduct programs i'll just share with you uh, borsaji so that you can communicate with uh, yes, with them yes yes right i'll share with you yeah, yeah. Sure. and we can also we can also plan to have a joint program like i was mentioning neat ipr okay so a joint program where our role will be like we will be playing an advisory role we will be connecting you to the different speakers okay. we will uh, see uh, we will design the uh, uh, based on mutual discussions we will design the course maybe a six day program five day program three day program whichever is convenient to you we can okay. design the course we can also connect the speakers with uh, different different agencies okay okay so like that we can do fine fine Yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pawan Kumar. Yes, it's immense uh, pleasure for all of us to interact with you, sir, and even uh, Mr. Rushikesh, uh, who all the way from City Bora College is a participant of this uh, training session. Thank you so much, Mr. Rushikesh. Uh, yes, I think it is so fruitful that our entire series is worked out so well that we have an innovator in front of us. So, who would be very soon turning to entrepreneur. So definitely you can approach our IIC center uh, with the Dr. Tushar Borses are heading it. So he would, along with Dr. Pawan Kumar sir as an expert, would help you out in this entire process of patenting. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. I think, Rishi, I think you should definitely you should definitely go for filing a patent. Otherwise, someone else someone else will definitely do it. Okay. If you feel that it it is new and no one has done it, then please do it at the earliest. Maybe okay. today, maybe tomorrow, maybe day after tomorrow. But don't don't delay. It. Don't wait for it. <laughs> yeah, before the idea is stolen by somebody else. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. yes. So, Rishikesh, be on your foot and immediately work it out as early as possible. So, if you need, we can share with you the contacts of Dr. Pawan Kumar sir, so with whom you can be in contact with, and uh, the VBAC as the Amrita will definitely help you out under uh, our own auspices of IIC. Oh, yes, uh, Dr. Pawan Kumar, so thank you so much for uh, spending your precious time with us and interacting so beautifully um, with all our faculty, IIC, and our students who are so enthusiastic uh, to start, have their own startups or to have at least creativity in their ideas or innovative, at least to a certain extent, in their approach towards their research. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Yes, you have taken us through a complete rainbow of what exactly is entrepreneurship, starting with the basics of it to the high end of what exactly is patenting and how to go ahead with it. And as you said, definitely we would be in future uh, conducting similar sessions because this was only the tip of the iceberg, but we may have many other features of this which we need to be highlighted in front of the students uh, yes and it is rightly as you said to be different to think different to work different and to have different finally technology to be ending up is a uh, take-home lesson for all of us and yes there is definitely a huge difference between wisdom and knowledge so the present generation uh, which are only with information rather than in wisdom or knowledge so have a lot of things to take home as to what exactly is towards the innovation and creativity. Thank you so much, sir. And I also take this opportunity to thank our principal, Sir Dr. Bharat uh, who could not be present here uh, because of another one official and at the same time an institutional program running at it, uh, where the deputy ex uh, chief minister is present, so he could not be available today. And Dr. Alasai Pashit, who is also from Department of Chemistry, the Vice Principal of Science Faculty, who also could not be present uh, for the same reason. 
but we are very sure that we would be organizing an interactive session uh, through a video call maybe in the future uh, in one or two days where we could have a very uh, brainstorming session as to how we can go ahead with this IIC. And I also take this opportunity to thank uh, Mrs. Neva Pendalkar, the IQS coordinator and president of IIC, Dr. Tushar Gosri, the convener of IIC and all the other activity coordinators of IIC and other faculty uh, who interestedly uh, participated throughout this session and my dear students of all departments of chemistry, biotechnology, computer science, microbiology, zoology, who are enthusiastically present for this lecture. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Bhavan Kumar, sir. And uh, to end it, I would like to just mention one thing. I am also an alumni of Usmania University. I have completed my MSc in Microbiology from Usmania University in 1997. And here I joined from 2000. So, oh. since 22 years, I am associated with this organization. So, so, so happy we are, we, we are directly yeah, connected. Yeah, we are the same platform. We are happy to know this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. So we will end this, but with the fruitful note that we will be definitely interacting with you very soon, sir, uh, with our principles and vice principles uh, under the umbrella of IIC, where we can take ahead much more events like this and activities together. As we said, we have a very fruitful collaboration. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank, thank you very much. Yes. Wish you all the very best. Thank you. I'm just leaving. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you.